Hello, this is Aldrin Ragunant. This is our third lecture on the theology of Pentecostal preaching. We want to discuss a very important subject in Pentecostal preaching, a subject that is debatable and debated. I want to speak about the anointing. There's a lot of nonsense going around on what the anointing is or what the anointing is not. Let, let me first of all uh, tell you what the anointing is not. First of all, the anointing is not loud speaking. Um, loud speaking is a cultural way of speaking but has nothing to do with the anointing. Some people say if you speak loud, then you are anointed. Then what do you do with people who are soft-spoken? Secondly, some people believe that um, an anointed person speaks emotionally and passionately. Um, by emotionally, he c that person could cry or that person could be very... Um, uh, passionate about the second coming of Christ and uh, or whatever subject and peop uh, some people say these people are anointed I ask the question what about those who do not speak emotionally and passionately thirdly some people say it is dramatic preaching like one of the TV preachers of the past. He would act out what is happening and he would run back and fro forth on the stage and he would say that is uh, the anointing and some people would say that is the anointing. No, that's just a manner of speaking and a manner of communicating. Thirdly, the anointing is not something you feel. Some preachers will hold their hands up in the air and will say, I could feel the anointing. Now, while that might be partly true, it is not altogether true. The anointing is not something you feel, but is something that you might um, uh, have a fondness to a particular preacher. Another point about the anointing that I think is wrong is that some people say he, uh, uh, the anointing is someone with a charismatic personality. He is like one of our great public speakers today and he has a lovable personality, he is winnable in his mannerism, and, uh, but that is not the anointing, that has to do with the personality of the person. Others would say uh, the anointing is a great public speaker, a great orator, and um, cultic leaders are great orators and public speakers, but are they anointed? No. And then people would, uh, people say anybody who is on radio or television has to be definitely anointed and um, that's not true at all. Television creates a, a something bigger than it is and it creates an illusion and if you're not aware of that then you would be deceived also. Now if you or anyone wants to be on television then all you have to do is give me fifty thousand dollars and I could buy time for you and uh, and that could make you anointed but that is not true a lot most preachers in the world are not on television and doing a great work of God there is a, a point that people talk about is that there is the uh, there is a double anointing like in in the case of Elisha and Elijah, Elijah prayed to Elisha or asked of Elijah before he was taken away if he could get a double anointing. 
or double of what he had so more miracles could be performed and there was uh, that favor uh, given however there is nothing like double anointing that's Pentecostal jargon what we have is that is the Holy Spirit is given to us and he anoints us 100% then what is the anointing some people go and talk about the Old Testament uh, ceremony of anointing people with oil and um, Samuel was anointed Aaron was anointed with oil and um, uh, David was anointed with oil but we do not see a consistent pattern of those who were ceremoniously anointed being uh, uh, had the anointing and, the, and so we have to out, uh, outrule that Elijah, not Elijah, John the Baptist was not ceremoniously anointed but he, he was mightily used of God and God has a purpose for him so um, that is Old Testament my friend who gives the best description is Robert Menzies he's a New Testament scholar and he says the anointing is a generic word to describe the empowering of the Holy Spirit while the baptism of the Holy Spirit is the specific term now when someone is anointed they would become bold they would speak in boldness, although they might be soft-spoken. They will speak with authority. They w souls would be saved. Signs and wonders and miracles would be performed in their ministry. And they would have a fruitful ministry. Wherever they go, um, people would be saved. And so... God is ha, uh, is given us a hundred percent today, so we can do the work of the ministry. So the anointing, then, as I have been trying to say, is not the, we use the word synonymously with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but specifically the anointing has to do with the Old Testament. For a few people in the New Testament. It is the baptism of the Holy Spirit where God empowers all His children who wants to do ministry and to serve Him. God bless you.